let's build ourselves a collection of limit laws, which will allow us to evaluate some pretty complicated limits. However, we're going to start, we're going to start very, very basic here. So we have on the left hand side, looks like the graph of y equals 2, just a constant function. And I'm taking the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2. Let's look on the graph right there. So at negative 1, it looks from both sides as if our function is approaching mm, 2, right? And that is, in fact, the value of the limit. So in other words, when we're taking the limit of some sort of constant function, the value of that limit is the constant itself. And here it is summarized. The limit as x approaches a of b is equal to b, where a and b are just real numbers. All right, that seems fairly obvious. Let's look at the one in green on the right-hand side. We've got what looks like y equals x. Hopefully that's not actually y equals sine x just totally zoomed in. It's not. All right, so we have got the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x. Let's look on the graph right there at negative 1. Looks like the y values are approaching also negative 1 from either side, and the value of that limit is negative 1. Notice that this one is essentially just a direct substitution. So in general, this one is the limit as x approaches a of x is just equal to a. It's just direct substitution. And again, that's the first thing that we want to try whenever we are evaluating our limits. So let's, uh, let's practice these highly complicated limits here on example one. Evaluate the following limits. And we have on number one, the limit as x approaches two of three. We have a constant function of three. It doesn't even matter what we're approaching. The value of this limit will, no matter what, be equal to um, three. Okay, let's look at number two. The limit as x approaches negative four of x. Well, again, the first thing that I want to try to do is direct substitute in my negative four for x, and I get negative four. Done. All right, let's build, a, well, let's build some more complicated limit laws here. Here's going to be the first two. But first, let a and c be real numbers and let the following limits exist. And by following limits, I mean these two on f and g specifically. And this part is super important. The limits have to exist. If limits do not exist, if one does not exist due to unbounded behavior, differing left-right behavior, or oscillation, none of these limit laws hold. All right, so we have the limit as x approaches a of f of x. It would be equal to some unique value over here. Maybe it's l. And the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to some unique number, and maybe that one's k or something. So those limits actually exist. So our first limit law is the limit as x approaches a of c, that's just some real number, some, some uh, constant, some scalar, whatever, times f of x should be equal to c times the limit of f of x as x approaches a. This is the constant multiple law, which basically means that the limit of a constant times a function is that constant times the limit. So for example, if this one, if the value of the limit as x approaches a if f of x was equal to 12, and we had three times that f of x, we can just take three times that 12. Very simple, right? Very, very simple. Okay, in green right down below, we have the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus or minus g of x. Both of those functions are being added or subtracted. The value of this limit will be equal to, assuming that these limits individually exist, the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus or minus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. This is the sum or difference law. And it basically means that we're taking the limit of a sum or a difference, assuming those limits exist, that should be equal to the sum or the difference of the individual limits. Okay, all right, so let's, let's maybe get two more of these. Again, it's the exact same setup with these two limits existing, the limit as x approaches a of f of x and of g of x, they both exist, they're equal to some unique value. The next one is, you can see that we have a product inside there. We've got the limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x. What do you suppose this one should be equal to? Did you guess that it should be equal to the limit of the products? Then you would be right, there's the product law. So we've got the limit of f, uh, 
limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches a is the same thing as the limit of f of x times the limit of g of x as x approaches a. So it is. The limit of a product is just the product of the limits. And you can notice right down below, we have the same kind of thing. So we've done addition and subtraction. We've done multiplication. Now we're doing division. We've got the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x. I wonder what this one is. Could it be the quotient of the two limits? The limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Indeed, it is. That's the quotient law. So likewise, the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits, but there is one small warning on this one, and that is that your denominator there, the limit as x approaches a of g of x, could not be equal to zero. If that was the case, not an indeterminate form, this one's going to, that would shoot off to either positive or negative infinity. Okay, so let's practice these limit laws. Let's put them into practice on this next example here. So we have graphs of f of x and g of x, so f of x is that uh, blue function that's in the graph, and then we have this piecewise function for g of x in green here. And we want to use the limit laws to evaluate each of these three limits. And if you take a look at this, take a look at that number three. So right now, the limit as x approaches three of f of x divided by g of x, I have a follow-up question right here. Watch it, watch it. Ooh, I just switched it. So I want to be able to, I want to do it in both directions and see what happens. So I want you to try to do these on your own. You may have to pause the video so that you can see the actual graph screen and, or the little graph grid there, and each of these limits and see if you can evaluate them on your own and check your work in the following video.